video picks coming up later in the buzz. Rick? And a beautiful day today, but we're going to show you the storms as they moved in last night on a 31 Tower camera. Plus, we'll show you the fifth graders at Discovery Middle School. That's when the night beat continues. This is 31 News at 10, The Night Beat, with Heather Burns, Don Phelps, Rick Mecklenburg, and Dave Dealey. With bureaus in Florence, Decatur, Scottsboro, Guntersville, and Fayetteville, this is 31 News Night Beat. Closed captioning of this Channel 31 newscast is made possible by Ziegler Meats, a tradition of great taste. Welcome back. Very chilly at 10 o'clock, already 46 degrees. Now the humidity is starting to pick on up there and the winds are starting to calm down. So I think we might see a little bit of frost first thing in the morning. Low for the day is our current temperature. Our high was at midnight. It was 71. Normally 72 and 48. We've been as hot as 85. <clears throat> Excuse me. And as cool as 36. Well, last night was a stormy night and we captured the moment on a time lapse here from 31 Tower Camera. We're facing west. You notice how it gets black as the sheet of rain moved across the uh, tower. We saw a little bit of lightning there, but things couldn't be better out there tonight. It's very, very pleasant. 45 right now in Albertville, 37 already in Cornersville, Tennessee, and also 45 as reported to us by our Shoals Bureau Chief, Alicia Smith. Well, here's what's happening across the uh, southeastern part of the country and the latest, uh, the latest radar image rather showing high and dry conditions across our area. But the cold front that moved through here last night and gave us a little bit of noise is continuing to push off to the east and affecting parts of the Atlantic seaboard. But what's going to be affecting our weather this weekend is high pressure. We're going to see a beautiful night tonight, a little bit chilly and a little bit of frost, but we should see plenty of sunshine for our Saturday. Very pleasant temperatures and really the same holds true for Sunday as well. A couple flies in the ointment for early next week. This frontal system right in here in the Rockies will start moving our way and give us a chance at uh, maybe seeing a few clouds on Sunday and the chance of rain as early as Monday night and Tuesday. Well, high temperatures tomorrow will be in the autumnal 60s with some 70s off to the south. And we've heard a lot about Hurricane Lily lately. Here's a time lapse of Lily. She moved across Cuba today and created quite a bit of damage as well. And if you're plotting Lily at home, she is located at 23.2 north, 77.3 west. Maximum winds remain at 90 miles per hour. And she's moving off to the east now and will increase in forward speed. So right now she's on top of the Bahamas, but will quickly move out to sea. Well, here's our forecast. No Lily effects for sure. We have high pressure and it's beautiful. Clear skies, patchy frost, a low of 35 with diminishing winds. For tomorrow, expect plenty of sunshine. A very pleasant day up to 64 with a northwest wind at 5 to 10. Here's the extended outlook now showing us some uh, beautiful weather all the way through the weekend. Next chance of rain won't be until early next week, Monday night and Tuesday to be specific. Well, because of the uh, rough weather last night, didn't have time for this. This. <laughs> this. There they are. <laughs> but I had the pleasure yesterday of speaking to a group of fifth graders at Discovery Middle School in Madison. We talked a lot about tornadoes, a little about hurricanes. Coming up here on the video, I want to show you a beautiful, beautiful cake. Now, wait till you see this. It's coming up, I can just tell. You sure they didn't need it? Maybe it, it maybe it got eaten off the video. But anyway, coming up in just a second, it's just a. <laughs> it was so good they ate beautiful. that one too. There it is. There it is. Yay! But it was uh, a oh, very nice great cake. 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 Look, a beautiful picture, and uh, beautifully delicious cake. I, it was good. You see the dog in the shot running out it of the way. It was excellent. It was a good cake, homemade. It was made by Mrs. Hester, who is one of the mothers of one of the students who I talked to yesterday, and that was uh, not too sweet. No, it was actually just moist, moist enough. Mm-hmm. Excellent. It was well, good. Had a good time out there. Good. Thank you, Rick. You're welcome. You know, it's a hobby that even some of us, some of us grown up kids enjoy. <laughs> it's a good one. Ow! And it was a great day for you paper pilots to hit the skies. Dozens of kids participated in the second annual Great Paper Airplane Contest today. 
Paper creations were judged in a number of categories, including loops, spins, rolls, and distance flown before crumpling to the ground. Contest entries had to be made of paper, of course, and had to be launched by hand. The American Institute of Aeronautics and Astronautics sponsored the event. Maybe some future engineers right there. Well, I made mine upside down, and it kind of crashed. Like that's exactly where it goes. I'll work on it. <laughs> The space program's on display this weekend, and a special guest helps kick off the festivities. A complete report coming up. Two congressional candidates tackle the issues tomorrow night. Those details are straight ahead. And David Lamb takes a sneak peek at a cool and crisp big show. Stay with us. A national celebrity stopped in town to honor one of our own. The ninth annual Von Brown Exploration Forum kicked off at the Civic Center tonight. As Nightbeat reporter Max Stemple tells us, you didn't have to look to the skies to see the stars. Von Brown's rocket lifted away flawless. Human beings were on their way to the moon. The ninth annual Von Brown Exploration Forum got off to a bang at the Civic Center. Broadcast journalist Walter Cronkite was in town to help the Huntsville community honor the pioneer of space travel, Lerner Von Braun. It's been so many years since I've been here. I was here in the very earliest stages of the Saturn program, and, uh, and it was very exciting, of course, then. Everybody uh, getting involved in the program, everybody looking up instead of down. Uh, and those are years when things are pretty down in the country. The forum celebrated the man who brought the space program to Huntsville, he had equal respect for the Huntsville community that helped to make it all happen. We knew that the city of Huntsville was solidly behind us, and with your continued support, I will see you back in orbit with that new space station. The world premiere of a new film was unveiled at the gala. The documentary, He Conquered Space, will be shown on the Discovery Channel. It chronicles the life of Von Braun. Cronkite says if Von Brown was alive today, he'd say our country needs to devote more time to the space program. Well, it's essential that we do. That is the frontier for the future. We've got to be uh, out there doing the job. And maybe one day we'll have a man on Mars. Thanks. In Huntsville, Max Stemple, 31 News. Mr. Cronkite will have his own documentary entitled Cronkite Remembers. It'll air on the Discovery Channel in January. Well, the weather this morning was a little bit scary, but it seemed to clear out just in time. By a local rocketry club. This weekend, that dream became a reality when a group reached space without help from NASA. Tonight, 31's Bill Hupcher shows you how these rocket scientists made history. It starts like many successful ventures have many times before. Hours spent toiling in a small garage. Using their own money and working on the parts themselves, the local chapter of the National Space Society built this six-foot rocket. Their goal? To see if they could reach space. We have devised this project, High Altitude Liftoff, which we call HALO, with the objective to fly student payloads into space at very, very low prices with very rapid turnaround times so that even high schools could fly experiments into space. A specially designed balloon lifts the rocket to a high altitude. Once the balloon reaches a certain height, the rocket is launched and cruises into space. At least, that's the plan. The mission is a first for an amateur space group. We'll be the first amateur group to fly a payload into space. And that is very unique. This is history. The group decided to launch Project Halo from North Carolina, where the winds would carry the drifting balloon over the ocean and to a safe splashdown. The moment of truth finally came last weekend. After two scrubbed launches due to the weather, Go! All right. Go! Yeah, it's up. It's up. The plane is going up. She is airborne. She is airborne. Project Halo was in the air. What you're seeing is video from an onboard camera. It's attached to the gondola carrying the rocket and is pointing straight up at the balloon. When the balloon reached 60,000 feet, an unexpected development. The balloon burst, and the whole package started a free fall back to Earth. The rocket, though, was quickly launched and reached an altitude of 30 miles. The Project Halo team does plan more launches in the future, but for the time being, they're basking in success. In Huntsville, Bill Hubscher, 31 News.